All right, my friends, J.R. Dukes here. Appreciate you joining me today. We have a very serious matter going on in Israel. We have Americans that are dead, probably have been taken captive, and we are not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into it. 17 minutes out before the top of the hour, more than 40 Palestinians were killed in the latest attack. You just heard Trey's report. Also just coming in right now, Israel Defense Force is now saying IDF forces killed a number of militants who crossed into Israeli territory from Lebanese territory. The fighters, could, the fighters continue to scan the area, and helicopter and gunships are now attacking the area. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, under President Donald Trump, joins us now from Jerusalem. And Ambassador, how do you describe what's around you and what you've experienced over the last three days? Well, the nation's in shock, Brian. Um, uh, this has never happened before. We're, we're looking at the largest um, assault and the most successful murder uh, campaign of the Jewish people since the Holocaust. And it's very difficult to watch. Um, you know, I'm in Jerusalem. Uh, I'm not in the line of fire, but I am going into shelters every uh, every hour or two. And uh, I'm used to this. I've been doing this for years, but I have to go explain to my grandchildren who are here visiting for the holidays, you know, that there are people in the world that wish to indiscriminately and brutally murder the Jewish people. It's, it's a hard message to deliver to a 12 year old girl. And I, I hope that, you know, the Jewish people will pass this point in the history, but regrettably we're not. We're not going to know until we do some interviews and do some after action reports. But why do you think Lamas said this is the time? This is the time to get Israel. This is the time to, to blow open the wall. This is the time to get into Gaza. And, this, and in August, reportedly, they were meeting about this. Why did it happen when you were ambassador? Well, it didn't happen when we were ambassador because I think our policies were so clear that in the event of, a, uh, of an attack on Israel by, by any terrorist group, uh, there would be no limitations placed on the state of Israel with regard to how it chose to defend itself, by itself, for itself. I think that message uh, resonated loud and clear uh, within Israel's uh, you know, enemies. Uh, the second point is, let's, let's be clear, this is completely planned by, by Iran. Uh, you know, Iran, uh, the Wall Street Journal reported this yesterday, I had known this before, Iran uh, carefully planned and approved every aspect of this uh, operation, and they would not have uh, uh, Hamas would have not have succeeded were it not for Iran's help. So um, you have to ask yourself, you know, why is the United States appeasing Iran? Well, literally at the same time, at the very same time that America is agreeing with Iran to exchange hostages at a price of $6 billion in cash, at the very same time, Iran is plotting with Hamas to annihilate the Jewish people. And, and, and the other point is, why is Iran doing this? They want to scuttle the progress being made between Israel and Saudi Arabia. That's their greatest fear. And unfortunately, at least for the time being, they've succeeded. Because with this you know, massive war going on, it's going to be very difficult for either Israel or Saudi Arabia to focus on, uh, on, on more productive ventures. Uh, I just want to share this with the audience. U.S. State Department spokesperson Matt Miller just said there are unaccounted for U.S. citizens in Israel and U.S. is working with the Israeli counterparts to determine their whereabouts. We do know, uh, sadly, that nine Americans are dead. We do know, we don't know how many, but we know some have been captured. Does that change America's stance in this? We're rushing weapons to the region. We still provide intelligence to the region. Ambassador uh, Robert O'Brien says we should be giving hostage negotiators, including the best to the FBI to help with this, especially with Americans involved. What else should we be doing? Well, we ought to be um, we ought to be adding all those resources to, to, to what Israel already has. I just got off the phone uh, half an hour ago with a, a father of an American boy who uh, had attended a music festival in, this, in southern Israel, and, um, and his son is missing, and he has no idea whether he is whether he was killed, whether he was captured, whether he's held hostage, whether he's wounded, because so many wounded people came into the hospital without any ID. Uh, this is this poor American father and mother are going through hell right now. And um, and, and, and there's there's a lot more of them out there. I think we'll find out more than uh, more than nine Americans are, are among those who are either wounded or held hostage. So uh, this was an assault on America, right. too. Let's not, you know, let's not let's not forget that. I mean, there's, you know, there were there were hundreds of thousands of, of Americans in Israel celebrating the Jewish holidays. And unfortunately, 
um, many of them, uh, you know, many of them won't be coming home, and, and we have to help those families. And by the way, it's just worth pointing out that the administration has not even appointed uh, an ambassador to the to Israel right now. So we even have no point person uh, for communications, which is just incredible. Uh, ambassador, one of the great worries is, and people watching this, to see if Hezbollah is going to start lobbing rockets in. We know they got the controversial Sheba, Sheba farms that both sides claim that they are in control of. Some rocket fire has been exchanged. The word is that if we, if uh, Israel goes into Gaza heavily, that's when Hezbollah starts getting involved. Have you heard that? Do you expect Hezbollah to come in? Yeah, I've heard a lot of things. Uh, uh, th there are Hamas uh, outposts in Lebanon, so the rocket fire could be coming from Hamas. The Lebanese uh, uh, president said he doesn't think Hezbollah is coming in. Look, I don't think, and I, and I hope I'm right, and I, and I could easily be wrong, but I don't think Hezbollah is going to come in, and, and I'll tell you why. Because all of these uh, are proxies for Iran, and Iran has achieved all it wanted to achieve uh, with, in the cheapest possible way, by, by, you know, by prompting and supporting Hamas. Uh, Iran doesn't care what happens to Hamas. No, no one cares if uh, what Israel does in the Gaza Strip. They don't care. They got what they wanted. They scuttled the uh, progress between Israel, America, and Saudi Arabia. And um, why they would want to then put, you know, Hezbollah out. All right, my friends, uh, obviously the ambassador's audio all the way from Israel with all the stuff that's going on over there is a little bit shaky, but we're going to stop it right there. This is exactly what happens when you have in office a weak president like President Joe Biden. When you have a weak leader, it invites aggression. It invites our enemies. It emboldens Russia. It emboldens China. Believe me, China is taking a very hard look, a very close look at Taiwan. These are very very troubling, very scary times. When you have a weak leader, you invite a potential world war. I'm telling you, this can get out of hand and get out of hand in a big way. Israel is one of our closest and dearest friends. And yet our president would not even meet with the Israeli president for two years. Biden has been trying to get a nuclear deal with Iran for the last three years. This same president of ours, as soon as he got into office, what did he do? He got us out of Afghanistan. He just cut and run and at the same time left approximately $100 million in weapons. Reports now have it that these weapons, via the black market, has been sold and now is in the hands of Hamas, who is now using it against our friends in Israel. An absolute outrage is going on right now. On top of all this, you have our president making a deal with our enemy in Iran for a hostage swap that he should have never done. Oh, and on top of that, guess what? He gave Iran $6 billion. Don't kid yourself. That money is finding its way back to Hamas to attack our friends in Israel. Also, I've had people contact me via comments or email saying, hey, this Matt Gates situation is blown completely out of control. Matt Gates did the right thing. And I'm saying BS. And here's the reason why, among all the other reasons I've been putting out there for everyone to understand. Number one thing going on right now in the House is we can't even help our friends in Israel. Why? Because we cannot approve any funding or any additional help for the state of Israel unless and until we swear in a new House Speaker because all funding bills in the United States under the Constitution must start in the House of Representatives. Unbelievable. Folks, do me a favor. Pray for Israel. Pray for the people of Israel. We must all come together, rally around our friends, and pray for them. The Bible commands us to pray for the peace of Israel, and I hope that's what each and every one of us do. Always know you honor me, allowing me to bring you the news, allowing me to come to you to basically tell you what's on my mind, and hopefully what I have to say is advantageous and add something to your daily life. Please, let's pray for Israel at this time. Until next time, my friends, I am J.R. Dukes.